Hey guys, how's it going? Can I use this? Is that okay? Okay, thanks. Hi, my name's Eliza, if we haven't met. I'm a student at UT Arlington, and I'm involved in the Baptist Student Ministry. Yeah, school pride, I guess. Um, um, and this summer, I spent two months in Jackson Heights, Queens, in New York City. So if you haven't heard of that area before, it's all South Asian immigrants. So like you can see some pictures of the neighborhood up there, but just walking around the streets, it feels like you're in India or Bangladesh. Um, so the people groups we encountered were uh, primarily Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, and Sikhs. And uh, yeah, I'll talk a little bit about my role, what I was doing there this summer. Oh, is it on? Do I have to turn it on? Thanks, guys. Thank you. So this is my team. So you can see on the left side is uh, the four of us with our pastor supervisor, Boto, and his wife. So there were four of us, and we had the role of missionary interns with Jackson Heights Community Church. So we had a lot of different responsibilities. I didn't know anything I was doing until literally after I got there. Um, so our first some of our role as uh, missionary interns was serving with the church, having our own personal discipleship and evangelism throughout the community, so just going out and meeting people and building discipleship and evangelistic friendships and relationships. Um, we taught classes at the South Asian Community Center. That's um, something that comes out of the church is they have a building in Jackson Heights, a very small building where they teach free English classes and free citizenship classes for the community, which is a huge need because it's all recent immigrants from South Asia who need to learn English and need to become citizens. So we're able to meet the needs of the community for free and by teaching those classes, but um, we also get to build relationship with the students. We got to become friends with all the students and got to share with many of them, which was very sweet. But another really big thing we did as missionary interns was we led the mission teams that would come for a week at a time to Jackson Heights throughout the summer. So we called it Sifting Week because we would have a team of college students or high schoolers come to Jackson Heights for a week. We would send them out two by two in the community. They would find people of peace and share the gospel with them. Um, but we also did a lot of other things with the mission teams as well. So we would typically start in the morning with an evangelism training for the mission team that um, focused on some discipleship and evangelism resources, but also a lot of specifically cross-cultural evangelism resources for those specific cultures. So um, the first week we were thrown in with the mission team because we didn't know what was going on, but uh, by the next week we were leading the mission teams. So in, in after the trainings, we would send them out to the community, and then we would do some other things in the afternoons. One of those is we would visit temples of all those religions I mentioned. So up here are, on the left, some pictures of some Buddhist temples, and on the right is a picture of some Sikh temples. So we would take the team into the temple. We would talk about the religion. We would get to see people worshiping, which is it's a very different experience if you've never visited any of those temples. Um, I would recommend doing so to learn about the religion, to talk to those people. We got to have conversations with people in the temple, which is really wonderful. Um, but just learning about their religions, learning how to connect uh, conversations back to the gospel, like exploring maybe something in Buddhism, like this is how Buddhism comes close to answering this question, but this is how Christianity, how the gospel actually answers it. So learning about their religions to connect with them, but also learning about it and seeing how much it just points back to the need of the gospel. And there were lots of challenges for personal application um, from the temples as well. In the Sikh temple, in the bottom right picture, you'll see that's the, the basement of the Sikh temple. And um, if you see the man pouring tea, they, when they heard we were bringing a group to the temple, they insisted that we come downstairs afterwards and that they, they, they wanted to give us a full meal, but we said no. They, they gave us tea and snacks, and they were just so kind and so servant-hearted. And so it's a challenge for us. Do we show that same hospitality to seekers of Christianity? And do we even show the level of devotion that you see, especially in Buddhism, like all these idols, they follow the Eightfold Path. They have all these things they have to do to just to hope and pray that they attain salvation. There's no assurance of salvation. Um, 
but do we have like the same reverence and just discipline as these people do who don't even have the hope that we have? We also visited a Hindu temple. I think this is one of the largest ones in North America. It was enormous, but you see all these idols and it's crazy. It's a very, it feels like a very dark place when you're present in there. But looking at all these idols, something we challenged ourselves and the team to think about was, I'm not better than any of these people if I elevate anything in my heart um, to the place of God. Like these people are bowing down to statues, but if I um, value my job, my social status, even my family, anything in the place of God, I am no better than someone who bows down to these statues. So something else we did with the team, we didn't do a lot of um, little kids ministry. It was mainly um, with older adults. But one thing we did was we would take the mission team to the park. And this was a very unscheduled, um, spontaneous time when we would do this. We would just show up at the park, start blasting some kids music, start playing with like a parachute, some chalk, and they would just like congregate. Like you see all the kids right there. And then we would rope them in with a Bible story, have an art competition, snacks, um, really fun time. And then while all that was happening, like we would be getting to have conversations with their parents, connecting them with the community center. That was how we got connected with a lot of people was just telling them that we, hey, we teach free English and citizenship classes. And like that's a need for most of the community. So that was one way we got to connect with people. A couple of the things we did with the mission teams that I don't have pictures of is we would go down into the subway station and we would do some singing and street preaching in the subway while passing out uh, flyers for the community center and free stuff. We had so many conversations, met so many people in the subway. We would even run into our students from class in the subway and they would be like, teacher, and run up to us and give us a hug. It was so sweet. We would also go to a coffee shop in Queens called Espresso 77. We would sing some more low-key worship music, not to make anyone uncomfortable, but we'd also sing um, in a lot of worship songs in Hindi and other South Asian languages, which was so much fun. And we would use that to get to talk to people in the coffee shop. After our first time singing there, Alexia, who is one of my team members, she speaks Spanish. So she was like, I want to sing a song in Spanish, and she did. Then one of the baristas came up to her afterwards in tears saying, like, I've been looking for a church ever since I come here to America from Colombia. And I've been praying to God to show me a church here. And then she's working that night and she hears Alexia singing a song that they used to sing back at a church in Colombia. And so Alexia got to disciple her for the rest of the summer. Our last Sunday there, they sang a song together in Spanish at our church, which was wonderful. Um, yeah, these are some pictures of the community center. So like I said, we would teach classes. We would also do some other events. So the top left picture was a party we had because three of our students had become U.S. citizens that week. Um, we also did an event at the beginning and at the end of the summer called Chat and Chai for our lady students. We would have free chai, free snacks. Um, Alexi would do everyone's henna for free, and we would also give away a bunch of really nice traditional clothing that was donated to the center for free. But we would have someone share their, a message or their testimony, and then we would just sit and talk with the ladies. And we got to have some wonderful conversations doing that. Um, at our last chat and chat at the end of the summer, I got to share my testimony. My friend Robin shared some verses. And Alexia sung a song in Spanish because we do have a couple of students from Colombia and Ecuador, and they, that was uh, really great to connect with them. But yeah, these are just some of our students. Um, the woman in the bottom right corner, her name is Nasima. She just passed her citizenship exam a week or two ago. Um, praise the Lord. I was able to tutor her up until her exam. Um, and yeah, those are just some of our friends we've gotten to share with most of our students um, and pursued discipleship relationships with a lot of them. And these are some of the people especially that we got to share with. Um, so I included Pastor Bodo's kids on there because another role that was unexpected was babysitter. Um, <laughs> Pastor Bodo and his wife have been doing ministry in Jackson Heights for 13 years since the day they got married, have not taken a single sabbatical. Um, and they were also in the process of moving over the summer while doing ministry. So I think something that was huge that we got to do was just to bless them by just taking their kids out of the house or like helping them move. Um, so I spent a lot of time with those kids. Um, in, the, in the middle is my friend Ronnie. A lot of you guys have been praying for her. 
Um, she has a very hard life, and she's still not ready to make a decision to follow Christ, and she's still in a difficult situation. Um, but I feel as though my role in the summer with her was just to water the seed and to serve her. Um, so please do continue praying for Ronnie. Um, in the bottom left is actually a girl I met at the fireworks show on the 4th of July. I shared the gospel with her and like met up every week for a Disco- discovery Bible study and got to get her connected with another local church. Um, in the top row is just some of our students that we got to pour into over the summer as well. Um, So yeah, prayer requests are please do pray for the long-term missionaries that are there in Jackson Heights who have been there long before we got there, will be there long after we leave. Um, Ministry in Jackson Heights is really hard. It's, it's It's a challenging place for sure. It can be very dark, experience a lot of opposition. Um, Just pray for the missionaries, the families that are present there. Um, Please do pray for uh, Bodo and his family as they take their very first sabbatical in October. He is the lead pastor of Jackson Heights, and he does, like, the majority of, like, a lot of leading the ministry there. So just pray for the church uh, during his absence, but also pray that his family would get rest. And um, also pray for the church as they're following up with the people we poured into over the summer. Um, one very special prayer request I have is, you'll see some pictures of me and my friends with um, a family from our church over there. So one of the women in the middle, her name is Shanti. She came to the United States maybe five, six years ago. Um, she, uh, Bodo and Lisha, his wife, helped her become a citizen. They shared the gospel with her, and she gave her life to Christ. She was able to share with her parents as well, and they, they um, accepted Christ as well. Um, so her, fa- her whole family that's here in the United States with her was able to receive Christ after, not long after coming to the United States. And now they are actually in, on a mission trip back home to India for three months to share with they are starting Bible studies in the village that they grew up in. Um, so please, please do be praying for just such a sweet family who's come to know the Lord in the past few years. And yeah, please do pray for um, my team, the four of us, as we've all gone back to our homes. Um, My friend Alexia in San Antonio, Seth in North Carolina, and Robin in Alabama. Just pray for us as we transition back to our college campuses and we're able to apply what we learned in Jackson Heights.